How you can make the Word of God flesh to you. Welcome to This Word is Your Life with Pastor Alexander Arthur. Today, Dr. Arthur continues his series, The Law of Increase. If you are dealing with bad economic times, dealing with famine, dealing with lack, Dealing with anything that comes to, in a sense, diminish, minimize, and, and cause for there to be a need. The way to meet the need is through a seed. And if you understand that, you will never, during bad economic times, ever in any shape or form, even fear or be afraid of what might happen. So long as you have a seed in the ground, how could you possibly be troubled? Amen. How can you be troubled when you have a seed in the ground? Hello? That woman went and did what she was told to do. The Bible says, believe ye God, and thou shalt be what? Established. Believe ye his prophets, and thou shalt what? Prosper. Did she believe Elijah? Yes. Did she go do what Elijah told her to do? Yes. Did she prosper? Yes. Case closed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now come with me to the book of James. Chapter 2. James chapter 2, and let's look at verse 17 from now, for right now. James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So if you are hearer of the word, And you are not a doer of the word. The Bible says your faith is alone and thereby it is dead. Let's go on. Verse 18. Yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show you my faith by my works. Which is to say that you can't say that you have faith if you don't demonstrate it by works. Works, in this case, being the law of corresponding action. Actions that correspond to your faith as you claim that you have. All right? Let's move on. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe. And so believing is not enough. The devils also believe. So you say, oh, I'm a believer. Well, the devils also believe but why do they tremble? Why do devils believe and tremble? You believe also. So what's the difference between devils believing and trembling and you believing and not trembling? Is that a good question? Oh, praise the Lord. Are you ready for the answer? Aren't you glad you came to church? Praise the Lord. Now, the reason why the devils believe and they tremble is because they are not doers of what they believe. You know, they don't accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. They declare him to be, 
but they don't accept. That's why Satan himself wants to be the God of this world. He is competing with God every day. He believes that he is the one who is to be worshipped. I listen to me here. And so when you believe and you don't show by your action that you believe, you will have fear. You will tremble. For example, if you don't believe in the scripture, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Let's look at that. Listen to the scripture. It's Luke chapter 6, verse 38. It says, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Now, if you have not given, but you have heard, and you believe that this scripture is of God, is the word of God. However, if you don't do it, James says that because you fail to do it, your faith is alone because there are no works Amen. that correspond to what you said that you believe. And the day will come that you have need of something and you can't seem to find a, a way to supply, to receive a supply. Why? Because you have not done what was required of... Remember the story in the Bible about the five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins. They each believe in the coming of the bridegroom. To the degree that they took their lambs to wait on the bridegroom for him to come. But one, the, 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 the wise virgins had oil with them so that they were able to keep the lamp burning. When the bridegroom came, they were able to go and meet him. On the other hand, the foolish virgins didn't take enough oil. And so when they ran out, it didn't even occur to them to go and get some. They were asking the wise virgins for oil when the bridegroom showed up. So we don't have time. Our focus is the one who has shown up. Anything will delay us. We're going. If you want to go back to the town, go back to the city and get you some oil. By the time they got back, it was over. The door was shut. Why is that? Because unless you recognize that it is about you demonstrating what you believe by what you do. The reason why we continue to sow every given time our tithes and offerings is because we don't know when the bridegroom is coming. We don't want to miss out. The reason why we come to church is that we don't want to miss out. When God will have a word. God may have a word the very season of that which you have been expecting, anticipating, wanting God to do for you. Everything that God does for you, he would do you, do you, do, he would do it first with his word. That's how God is. You want me to prove it to you? Hold on to this. Go to Romans chapter 8. Verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That, now, Jesus is the word. Would you, get, would, would you agree? He is also the son. You can read it. He that spared not his word, but delivered his word for us all, how shall he not with his word also freely give us all things? 
So if you want freely all things from God, he will give those things to you through and by and with his word. And so when God wants to give you a car, he'll give you a word for the car. When God wants to give you a house, he will give you a word for the house. When God wants to give you a good man, say a good man. A Christian man. A good man to be married to, a husband. Hello. He will give you a, a <laughs> he will give you a word for that husband. Hello. And it will be a, a, a man that is born again, a man that works. Hello. A man that works. A, a man that goes to church. Hello. A man that is not self-centered. Hello. A man that can love you as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. A handsome man. Like your pastor. <laughs> Hello. You, you didn't clap. You didn't clap for that one. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I don't want it now. Uh, if you didn't give it to me, then I don't want it now. But you want a man. Oh, let's talk about a woman too, then, okay? Now, now, if you want a wife, you should want a wife that first is born again. A wife that loves God also. A virtuous woman. The Bible says one that her husband safely trusts in her. Hello. Hallelujah. A wife that is submissive. Hello. Well, I, I'm done with that. I'll just say, like my wife. Well, you know, uh, having said all of that, I just want you to see this. That the God that we serve does not want us to play games. Amen. The thing that we believe, and we really don't demonstrate by our saying that we believe, by our actions. Amen. Let's go back to James chapter 2. We were at verse 19, I believe. It says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? If you don't do what you know to do, what you knew to do, as far as God is concerned, is dead in you. The only way you keep what you have heard from God's word alive in you is by you doing it. You know, you can always have an excuse not to do something. You know that? You can have an excuse. Everybody can have an excuse. I want to show you something here. Come with me to Matthew. Matthew chapter 21. And let's look at verse 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second son and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And went not. Did you get it? Yeah. One said, I will not go. Repented. Turn around, face the other direction, and went and did it. The other one said, I will go. 
but he didn't go and do it. Whether of them twain did the will did the will of his father? Jesus is asking the question. They say unto him, the first. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans, not republicans, not, <laughs> that the publicans <laughs> and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Now, <laughs> Uh, I guess what I want to say, what, what the Lord wants to say is this. There are times that people will say a lot of stuff. Do you know how many times that people have come to this church and said, Pastor, the Lord has sent me here to help you build this church. I've heard it so much. <laughs> and after a while, you don't see them again. If the Lord actually told you that, and you didn't do it, you're like the second son. Hello? Because, because the thing is, is that if you said the Lord said so, then you must do what the Lord said you should do. Even if I were to offend you. Hello? And I don't like offending people. But every once in a while, I do. And you do too. Hello? You do too. But the key is this, that the idea behind this is that if we have a work to do, because God has called us to do it, then we go ahead and we do it no matter what. No more excuses. Just do it. Just do it. Praise the Lord. Let's go to another place here. Go to Genesis chapter 22. And I know I'm not going to finish what I'm about to say with you, to you here. But we'll pick it up from next week, uh, up to next week and maybe it'll be done then. Genesis chapter 22. You know the story here. Well, let's read. And it came to pass after these things. When you read the Bible and you read, and it came to pass, that phrase, find out what came to pass, okay? Uh, because of time, we're just going to move on. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, The word tempt should really be test, okay? Because God does not tempt anybody. That's what the Bible says, right? In fact, hold on to this. Go to James chapter 1. And let's look at verse 13. James 1, 13. Let no man say, when he is tempted, that I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Case closed. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 22. So it should have been that... And God did test Abraham. You know, I said to you many times, a test is intended to promote you. A temptation is intended to demote you. So God does not tempt you with the intention to demote you because he doesn't tempt at all. But what he rather does is that he will test us so that he can promote us. Are you listening to me here? And it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell of thee. Then he goes on, and Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Would you agree he went and did? 
Would you agree he went and did? Yes. Let's move on. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young man, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the Lord will, I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Abraham considered his obedience to God as worship. God told him, bring your son, bring your son to me, and I want you to sacrifice your son for me. Go do it, Abraham. And in that obedience, as Abraham was telling his servants what he and Isaac were about to do, he referred to that experience that he's about to have as worship. And so obedience really is the highest form of worship. You obeying God is the highest form of worship. You don't allow the enemy to give you excuses to prevent you from doing it. Verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and went both of them together. Verse 7. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Now, first of all, <clears throat> you're going to come back next week to get the rest of it. The second of all, <laughs> because they tell me I have five minutes. Uh, but but the, the second of all, I want you to notice this. This boy must have seen his father offer sacrifices to know that a lamb is usually utilized in this burnt offering sacrifice. So he was saying that, well, I've seen it many, many times. Somebody loses their life. And so I see what we need here. I see the fire. I see the wood. But where is the sacrifice, if you will? <laughs> he didn't know he was it. <laughs> and I, Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. <laughs> what made him say that was because this man knew. Now, one, this is so very important that I need to give it to you just in case you don't come back. Because some of you are monthly worshipers. <laughs> others of you are quarterly worshipers. Still, others of you are semi annual. I don't want to talk about the annual ones, you know. But so that you can take something with home today. This is what I want you to see. And I'm done. No, it wouldn't be nice. I got to do it. I'm just kidding. This is what I want you to get. The offering, the statement that Abraham made, about this burnt offering, about this lamb, is a statement that fought everything in him. Because God has said to him, Abraham, it will be through Isaac that all the nations will be blessed and thy seed be called. Because God had said, I mean, Abraham had wanted Ishmael, you all know about Ishmael, to be the one, and God said it won't be Ishmael. And so if it's not going to be Ishmael, and it's going to be Isaac, and Isaac now is about to be slaughtered, what will make a man 
decide to obey God, to sacrifice the very person that he had declared to him through him, through this person, Isaac that is, that the, his seed will be called. You kill him, where will the seed come from? He has to at least, by this time, Isaac had not uh, met uh, Rebecca yet for them to have the twins, Esau and Jacob. For Jacob to have the 12 sons, to become the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 sons of Israel, one of whom was Judah, and through Judah, the seed, Jesus, was born. So if Isaac didn't exist, so would not be Jacob. If Jacob didn't exist, so will not be Judah. And if Judah didn't exist, so will not be David and the line of David eventually coming of Joseph and Mary and for Jesus to be born. And so, in a sense, imagine, sometimes you wonder, you remember the, the woman, uh, the widow woman, the widow, of course, widows are women, widow, the, the, the widow who gave her last might. Isaac was being offered as the last because there's nobody. God has already rejected Ishmael. And so if this man Abraham was going to obey God and offer up Isaac because the Bible says Abraham believed God and God credited it unto him for righteousness. If he believed God then he, his works must prove that he believed God. And the works here required of him to offer up Isaac. To receive a copy of today's message in its entirety, write to us at Word of Life Christian Center International. When you write, be sure to, to receive a copy of today's message in its entirety, write to us at Word of Life Christian Center International. When you write, be sure to include the name of today's message and your choice of either an audio or video copy. CDs and audio tapes are $5 and video cassettes or DVDs are 10